This 625 uh, ended up on my bench recently. Um, the owner complains that the heater voltages, the, the filament voltages seem to be gone as an indication uh, the, the tubes are not glowing, right? It stands to reason. This is not uh, a very complicated unit. It's a tube tester, you know, it's not an amplifier, but, but hey, you know, we're here to fix everything. So we'll get started. I, I pulled out uh, the, uh, there's one tube and it says 6H6, looks like a rectifier, and it's weak. Uh, it passes technically, it's acceptable, but but weak. But that shouldn't be causing this issue because the, the heater, the filaments are not, you know, rectified. It's AC. But we're gonna we're gonna dive in here. We're gonna we're gonna plug it in. We're gonna put it on the isolation transformer, and we're gonna see where voltage disappears. We're just gonna literally trace this bad boy out and see where voltage stops and fix that section. Call it a day. I let the rectifier cook for a little while. This is a uh, metal tube. Set my line adjust back just to be fair. And this is as good as we get, just above 60. So could consider replacing that tube if need be. You know, it is not the most accurate tube tester, but it's generally not wrong either. But yeah, that's the rectifier. So at 117 volts line voltage, I am seeing some very specific AC voltages coming out of this transformer into the voltage selection switch. Uh, that tells me that at least as far as my testing so far, uh, the voltages on the transformer seem to be good. So this is a good sign because I'd much rather deal with a, a, a switch issue than a transformer issue. They'd be a little hard to come by. So I think I'm, I'm going to stop here and try and find the output and clamp to the output of this switch and see if I could just run through all of those settings really quickly. So it looks like this middle bar right here uh, follows green wire that comes up into that switch. It's one of those wires that doesn't match the others, and that looks like the output for that switch. Yeah, I'm not I'm not seeing that uh, that AC coming out the other side here, so I'm gonna have to do some in investigation. This is where we're losing it. I know the transformer is good. Uh, that's about it. After the transformer, we're gone. So let me take a look and see what's going on here. I'm going to have to find uh, one side of that coil and come off the other side of that switch and see if I can fix this. The switch itself seems mechanically sound. I give it a good cleaning with deoxit. You know, since it's a mechanical switch and not like a tensiometer, I really didn't worry, you know, about what I flushed out of there. And uh, I let it drain. I, I, I cleaned it up real nice and then I tested it. And lo and behold, I get some good voltages on the middle rail now. So I deoxid, I give deoxid on all these connectors, uh, this uh, um, potentiometer right here, a couple other ones in there, cleaned up everything uh, real nicely. Uh, check that capacitor, not for, for, for leakage, but uh, just checked it for operation. Uh, put the, uh, the tube back in and uh, yeah, I checked these resistors as well, made sure they were okay and they're within specification. We'll give this thing a whirl, see how it works. I've also been eyeballing the nice hairline crack going down the middle of the original uh, supplied knob for this. So I have temporarily replaced it with my own chicken head uh, for the duration of this repair job. This will be my supplied one. So according to the data sheet, a 12AX7 says shunt is on 15. Uh, filament voltage will be set, obviously to 6.3. Should all know that by now. Uh, selector switch is set to one, right? But before I set that permanently to one, I want to set that to line adjust, okay? Give that a little courtesy tap there and bring the line adjust down. This isn't my type of tube tester, so I'm just a guest visiting, right? So there's my line adjust, and then I can finally set the selector to one. So my line adjust is set up, right? Uh, 12 AX7. Uh, and I'll do just one side. That's going to be one and two up, right? One and two up. Three, four, and five down. Uh, owner says that there is no filament voltage. 12x7. Pop that bad boy in. And what do you know? We have filament voltage. We have no uh, tube short. I guess there's no gas light on this model. It looks like a nice, a nice heating uh, uh, 
color for the tube. So we'll uh, run a test. And we're seeing 80, which is what I see with my other transconductance tester. And that looks just fine. We'll test the other side of the tube, right? So, so we'll reset these toggle switches, right? And this is uh, 6, 7 up. And 4, 5, 8 down. Should be a balanced tube. We should see 80 on the other side as well. Okay, so uh, clearly we have 12AX7 working. I think, obviously, I could do a better job here by actually plugging in uh, a meter now and, and making sure that we're seeing what we need to see. Having tested the 12AX7, I can now uh, put together a circuit here that shows the uh, roughly the filament voltages because, obviously, there is an expected load uh, in the circuit and there is no load here, so some of the voltages may be slightly off. Right now, it's set to zero. Right, and this is um, uh, 0.75, 1.4, 2.0, 2.5, this will start to balance out, 3.3, .3. 3.3, .3. Five point oh is a six point three, which was our uh, twelve eight seven voltage. Seven point five, twelve point six, twenty five, at thirty two, fifty. 70, 110, so we can say with certainty now that uh, AC voltage for the filaments are being delivered all the way to the sockets now. So it looks like the problem with this tube tester is now fixed. Here's a 35Z5 tube, entirely different voltage, entirely different socket. Um, there is no 35 volts on this unit, uh, ironically. I, so we set it for 32 according to this setup, and we're going to we're going to check it out. Uh, this one is, is good. Yeah, I know it's good. But it shows that the tube tester is working uh, for that socket. I've tested this one, this one, and this one on this side, delivering voltage just fine. I don't have every tube for every type of socket. Uh, I can only assume that things are looking okay. I did the test again using the 6H6 settings. And the reason I did that was it allowed me to use the, the octal uh, a jack to test the voltages too and I used the wall the filament testing to make sure it was coming out that jack too to make sure that multiple jacks were getting these voltages and that worked as well uh, just as I was taking off my chicken head to put back on the original knob the original knob cracked in half so I had to now repair the original knob and by the looks of the shaft it looks like this knob has been halfway loose on this shaft for a good long time with the screw eating into the shaft. You can see it has dug down quite deep in there for quite a long time. So it is unfortunate that this knob has been under a lot of stress for simple lack of tightening the screw in the back. But um, yeah, so I'm repairing this. It was a nice clean break. You know fortunately so I've had it under a lot of pressure and it has set nicely these are the tough ones though you know it's nice when you get the uh, the shaft that has the uh, notch in it where the screw just rests in the notch to stop it from turning but this is this is one of those binding ones so this will be a trick we'll see what happens but yeah just as I'm about to walk away from this project and you know bring it to an end you know there's always a surprise surprise but what are you gonna do Anyway, but that's the end of the job. Thanks for watching.